Hi, everyone. I just want to quickly introduce myself and uh, Dr. Lau. So I'm Celie Thompson. I'm the student resources coordinator. I kind of manage the writing center. So if you've ever sent an email to the writing center, you probably corresponded with me. Um, and Dr. Lau is doing our workshop today, our webinar. So the topic today is about writing strategies, uh, common writing errors that students make and uh, strategies to stay focused in your writing. So, um, and just before we get started, I do wanna mention that we are recording this. So um, you'll be able to revisit it later. And there is like a Q and A, you know, you can type questions in the Q and A uh, area. And as uh, Dr. Lau is giving the presentation, I will do my best to answer some of those or she will try to answer as many as she can at the end. Okay, or you can also type in the chat. Um, yeah. Okay, well, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, Celie. Cel Thank you so much. Um, again, my name is Dr. Teresa Lau. I am in San Antonio, Texas. Um, right now, we have uh, heavy rain and cold. You know, it's cold in San Antonio. Um, we just have ice. And so, an interesting thing about today is uh, we have ice, uh, nothing compared to the cold front uh, and maybe you know inches of snow in other places, but uh, no classes and no work in a lot of places because we have um, uh, cold weather and cold weather is about 20 degrees, I would say 20 degrees um, and then ice. And then in another city in, in, in Texas, Lubbock, they have about two inches of snow, so no school. So I think that's an interesting uh, fact or note about what's going on in Texas. And you might probably say, oh, that's nothing compared to uh, what you guys have right now. But I just wanted to share that interesting fact. All right, let's get started. So I work as a writing consultant um, with the Dropbox. So I do the Dropbox, meaning the asynchronous reviews. So you submit your papers and then uh, I, I review that and return to you within 36 hours. And then we also have the live, uh, live sessions and you get to talk to a consultant face-to-face. -face. Um, so I wanted to share um, some common patterns or themes that I see uh, in students' writings. And, and also, uh, some of the students also talk about how they get deduction in points um, whenever they, they have the same errors, okay? Um, so there are five key things that I wanna focus today. And of course, uh, write your notes if you come up with some ideas for future workshops um, and, and kind of you know, list the things where um, some of those errors that you get a lot of deductions, probably APA, um, but we'll cover that as well in, in you know, maybe a short part of our presentation. So write that down. And so for the next workshop, we'll incorporate some of your feedback to our next presentation. Um, so writing the introduction, we'll talk about that today. Organization, um, incorrect attributions. That's very interesting as well. Using you or your in writing, and then alignment with in-text citations and references. And of course, we'll have time for some wrap up and questions as well. Just a brief background in terms of my writing background. So I've been teaching and writing for more than 25 years. I worked for the El Paso Times. That's when we had the actual newspaper, you know, and you could read from page to page, but now you could easily get your news online. Um, different writing styles are required in different um, work situation. So if you are working, let's say, um, for your workplace, right, they would require a specific writing style. So through the years, I've incorporated different writing strategies, one, you know, working as a newspaper copy editor, another working for a senior editor for um, a nonprofit at New Mexico State. Um, I also work as an EEO 
uh, investigator, and uh, we also did uh, writing reports on discrimination cases. Um, English and business communication courses also require different styles of writing. And then as an arbitrator for the Better Business Bureau, um, we are required to also use, we, we, we reference, you know, uh, the Lemon Law, for example, for the BBB, um, but the citations are not as strict as the academic writing where you are supposed to mention the authors and the years in a specific way. Okay, so just a brief background of how you could easily switch your writing style depending on uh, the workplace or who you're supposed to submit the writing to. So let's start with the introduction. And I can always stop as well, um, maybe after one or two slides to see if you have any questions um, about this topic. So one of the things that I see when students submit their papers and they write their introduction is they start writing the body uh, of the paper. You know, they start talking about for example, if the topic is about leadership, they start talking about um, the different styles of leadership. They start talking about their experiences as a leader or reporting to someone who is a leader. They don't take the time to really think about their introductions, but the introduction is one of the most important section of your paper because it, it lets the readers know, okay, what is your stance? What is your argument about the topic and how you're going to organize your paper. And as a writer, once you know how you're, you're going to organize your paper, then you can simply focus on those topics without kind of feeling overwhelmed and thinking, oh, you know what? But I, uh, I, I want to write this, I want to do this presentation, I want to talk about this. Um, with, with, a, with a good introduction, you could uh, formalize your, your ideas in writing and, and then stick to those uh, topics only, okay? So if you prepare your introduction, I assure you that you will be able to write the body of your paper uh, without uh, a lot of problems, okay? So start with general to specific. So let's say your main topic is, you know, leadership styles, um, or um, I've, all, I've seen a lot of papers about Crenshaw, like time management skills, for example, um, or in project management, right? If you are talking about um, uh, project life cycle, right? Um, so, so whatever is the title, of your paper, start with a general topic about that general topic. So if it's leadership style, the general idea that you could start at the beginning of the sentence, for example, is, um, you know, what can you say in general about leadership styles? Okay, so something that came to my mind, maybe, you know, we all exhibit different leadership styles in different situations. We may not hold a leadership position, but we, in a way, um, interact with other people, you know, through our interactions with other people, we exhibit a specific leadership style. Or you can say as an introduction, um, you have encountered, you know, different individuals with different leadership styles. And it's important to know these styles so that you know how to approach a situation with that person. And maybe when you become a leader one day, uh, this is how you will exhibit that specific leadership style, okay? So that's the general idea, okay? And I also like to see even one in-text citation uh, in the introduction. Okay, so if that's if that's a topic leadership style, um, I can easily look in the course materials or outside source, which is you know current within the last five years. And if I say all of us exhibit different leadership styles depending on the situation, I'll find another source that supports that statement, 
and then I will include that not not at that first introduction where I said where I said where I wrote we all have different leadership styles, but I will include that in text citation. Uh, maybe the second sentence or the third sentence, and I can say something like um, uh, Crenshaw 2020 uh, indicated that individuals need to be flexible um, with how they interact with other people and to change your leadership styles depending on the situation. Okay, so here I just found someone who validated what I just said about leadership style. So it, it kind of now, even with one or two sentences at the beginning, I've kind of started a very good introduction, okay? And then after that, after I talk about my leadership style um, and added the in-text citation, I now have to think about my thesis statement. And thesis statement is one of those difficult things also that students have difficulty um, writing uh, in their introduction, okay? Uh, th think of a thesis as your stance or your argument about a topic, okay? So you have a general topic where you said we all exhibit different leadership styles, but now what is your specific stance or argument about it? Okay, and that will somehow form the different topics in your paper. So an example, I place that right below. Individuals need to hone their leadership styles to be effective in decision making and let me move my picture and problem solving skills. But I would probably add a because, you know, normally when I see a thesis statement, um, I would, I could, I could end with problem solving skills, but I could also add a because in that sentence and say individuals need to hone their leadership styles to be effective in decision making and problem sol solving skills because they will be able to uh, motivate employees to be productive and to enjoy their work in the workplace, for example, okay? Or to enjoy what they're doing in the workplace, okay? So if you can add a because, okay, in your thesis statement, that would be a good way also um, of, of starting your thesis statement. So you have now the general, right, idea. Then I included an in-text citation. Um, now I added my thesis statement, okay, which means, if that's my thesis statement, individuals need to hone their leadership styles, that's going to be a main section of my paper, honing my leadership styles. Why? First, my first paragraph, it says there to be effective in decision-making. So maybe my first paragraph after the, the introduction will be effective decision-making. And then the second one would be problem-solving skills, or I could do both, okay? so. That would be one way to do that. And if your introduction is not too long, okay, I suggest that you also include your purpose, okay? Most of the time, I don't see purpose. Um, it's good to have a purpose statement, although it's probably not required in a lot of papers, but it also sets the tone uh, in terms of what you are going to discuss in your paper, okay? So after writing your thesis, so thesis is, is right here, right? You said they need to hone their leadership styles to be effective in decision-making and problem-solving skills. Now, once I've done my intro, once I've done my thesis, another line or the same line, okay? Or maybe the next paragraph, I can say the purpose of this paper and then use a verb. Are you going to describe? Are you going to explore, explain, identify? Okay, what are you going to do about the topic of leadership styles? Okay, so I could say the purpose of this paper is to discuss different leadership styles um, in the workplace. Uh, and, then, um, and then I can continue with uh, two, 
uh, to identify what would be the best leadership style that fits uh, my personality. Okay, so you could use I or me in APA papers. Okay, so there's uh, if you actually if you look at uh, uh, your your APA manual, it says you can use I or me. However, um, try not to overuse it because imagine if all your sentences start with I or me, that becomes really redundant. Okay, like I, my personality is this. I love to delegate task and then I, 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 right? It becomes kind of like, mm, okay, that's, that's good to know, but can we read something else, right? To support something about you, okay? All right, so the purpose, okay? So you write your purpose, okay? And then now you could also do an overview that in that second paragraph, I will discuss my experiences when it comes to, um, writing my assignments. Of course, that's a different topic. Um, if you want to continue with the topic of leadership, you could say, I will, um, I will describe different managers whom I've worked with and discuss two dominant leadership styles that I've seen in the workplace. Then, then do a period there. Next, I will also identify um, ways to be effective as a leader. And then finally, um, I will, okay, and finally, okay, um, I will also cover uh, different theories about leadership styles, something like that, okay? But so far, in terms of my overview, I talked about my thesis statement. I talked about the three things that I want to discuss in my paper, okay? Um, and then, I, I use specific verbs to ensure that those are the different approaches I'm going to use um, to set the tone for the rest of the paper, for the body of the paper, okay? So if I say um, to describe okay, different leadership styles, my next section, which is going to be the main heading of my paper, right? So you need to have headings is to describe the different leadership styles. That will be the main heading, okay? Um, and so I could start my first paragraph with different leadership styles. Uh, of course, in-text citations, because leadership styles, um, you could easily find that in your text or outside sources. Um, and your the sources are there to support your ideas. So just make sure that when you start discussing those, that your ideas are also included, okay? Um, so leadership styles, and then the next one, if I say I'm going to describe two dominant leadership styles and that I've seen in the workplace, then that could be a subheading because you, the general information would be leadership styles, and then underneath that, the two dominant styles with examples. Okay, and then that kind of sets off the different sections of your paper. Now that you have a good introduction, you just sort of outline the different sections in your paper. So if you write that as an outline, leadership styles, um, the next one, dominant styles, another example, let's say um, uh, real life examples, um, that would make me an effective leader, something like that. And then if you wanna add another section, like a main heading, just go back to your thesis statement and the overview that you wrote and make sure that you only write about those things that you indicated in your thesis statement and the overview of your paper. So don't come up with new things that you didn't introduce in your introduction. Sometimes I get that also. You'll say you'll discuss these things and that that's your purpose statement, but then sometimes you'll insert, some students will insert some things in their paper that they said they weren't going to discuss. Or I'll see something in the, in the conclusion which is totally different um, from what they talked about in the introduction. Um, and I'll say, you know, you didn't talk about 
you did talk about ethics in your introduction. You didn't say you were going to talk about it. How, how come suddenly you said a good leader is someone who is ethical, for example? I mean, that's fine if you're going to say that in your conclusion, but you need to mention it in your, the body of your paper and you have to mention it in your introduction as well. So that would be an example. So let me stop here and see if you guys have any questions about writing the introduction before I move on to the next topic, okay? Which, which is including headings and subheadings, um, which is still part of the introduction, okay? So let me stop here and see if uh, you guys have any questions for me. So yes, type your questions in the chat area. Okay, so I'll move on to the next next topic. And then, you know, Celia and I will just go back in the chat area to see if you guys have any questions, okay? So any questions, you know, um, uh, about writing the paper, okay? Thinking about a general topic and then having the writer's block because, you know, you couldn't think of how to get started, okay? All right. So now that we talked about your overview, your thesis statement, your, over, your purpose, your overview, now you could, you could write the headings or subheadings. So the headings, if you have different sections that you wanna discuss in your paper, then you'll start with a heading, which is usually in the middle of the paper, okay? Organize your paper, especially if you're writing a two to three page paper or longer, organize with headings. Um, when I see a paper, that's more than a page and it's so long, the first thing that comes to mind is, oh my gosh, this is too long. Um, I'm overwhelmed. I need a break. I need somewhere in that paper. I need a stopping point where I could rest my eyes and say, okay, um, are we still talking about one topic or have we moved on, okay? So just imagine a conversation when somebody just talks and talks and talks and doesn't stop talking. And you're like, oh, did you already move on to the next topic? Um, if you did, can you stop? Okay. So same thing with writing. Okay. Um, you want to stop. You want to help the readers transition uh, from one topic to the next. Okay. As a writer, you have to transition from one topic to the next. And for the readers, it helps them follow the organization of your paper. So if the headings are missing or the subheadings are missing, it's so difficult to follow, okay? Um, another thing about headings also is that don't just rely on one word headings. So example here, politics. Don't just write politics. I mean, Politics is such a broad topic. You, you have to add more than one word, okay? Sometimes even two words may not give you enough details about that heading, okay? Example, politics in the workplace, right? Instead of just writing politics. Leadership. How do you think you could expand or add more details to the word leadership? Can you guys write your answers in the chat area and let me see how you would add more words to that one word heading leadership or your own example, whatever paper you're writing. Okay. Do you have any paper right now that you're writing? Um, and let's see, uh, you know, how exactly are you you know, changing or how you're adding more words to that paper. Okay, leadership behaviors. So that's good, Camille. How else can we add leader, leadership behaviors where? For example, leadership behaviors, how else can we add? Okay, so different styles of leadership throughout the workplace. Leadership styles, okay, leadership traits. So multiple leaders. Um, so how can we add another word to leadership styles or leadership traits? Leadership differences, okay, can we add like three words? Can we do three, three or four words? Leadership styles in or leadership styles off to have in management. Okay, yeah, so that's good, all right? 
So if now I kind of know, okay, we're talking about management here. Okay, so it kind of gives me an idea. Okay, so this is the workplace situation that are effective. Okay, there you go. Or strategies for effective leadership. Okay, leadership differences in the workplace. So that one, Jacqueline, is good. Just, just remove the question mark. Okay, and of course, when you write the headings, capitalize the main words of the title. Um, I'm not sure about leaders, leaders who, leaders who, strategic. So maybe there's something missing in that word, leadership who are something, right? Who are strategic, okay? Maybe who are strategic in their communication, leadership who, leaders who are strategic in their interactions with others. Can your, your first heading be different than your paper topic? Um, your title, your title has to reflect your topic, right? So if your title, for example, is leadership styles in the workplace, your main topic should at least cover the word leadership style, okay? Now for your first heading, so the title will be leadership styles, right? That's the introduction. And then you have the, the introductory paragraph. The next paragraph where you start the body, it's okay to have a different title as long as it relates to the purpose statement or the thesis that you wrote, okay? Um, if we said something like um, leaders need to hone their leadership styles, you could start, you know, you could say honing um, or, or um changing your leadership behavior to ensure, as long as it kind of reflects, okay? Not the, it doesn't have to be the exact words, but it has to reflect your thesis statement and the different topics that you said you're going to talk about, okay? But you do have to follow the order that you said you were going to discuss in your paper, okay? So for example, if you say the purpose of this paper is to, okay? That the purpose, you know, if you have a specific main introduction about that purpose, that should be the first one. And then if you say, um, I will discuss the following things in your list, in your introduction, you have to follow the same order in your in the body of your paper. So if you're saying you're going to discuss this, then you're going to talk about this topic, then you're going to introduce this then follow that order. So it can't be like, oh, you said you're going to discuss these, these three things. And then in your paper, it's all like mixed. Like I have to find, oh, you said you're going to talk about it, but then I found it at the very end. Okay, so follow that same order. Okay, all right. Okay, I hope I answered those questions. So good, good, good examples as well. Um, I also tell the students not to use the same questions as in your instruction, okay? So do not copy the question. So for example, here's an example here, slide six. So I hope you guys are still this, the same slide. If, if one of the questions in your assignment says, um, discuss your, or, or think about these questions, what is your most dominant leadership style? Don't copy that question as a heading, okay? So I could probably put there dominant leadership style. Okay, I'll just add the word dominant. Dominant leadership style in the workplace, okay? So I'll, I'll you know, that's one way I could, I could change the question, but don't copy the entire question. Sometimes I'll see the entire questions as a heading, okay? So... We don't need those questions, just use three, four, five words in your heading. All right, moving on, okay? So I'm moving on to the next topic, okay? This is kind of like my, my headings, okay? My next heading, my next topic is incorrect attribution. Unless we have more questions about headings, let me know. And if you guys don't have any questions, okay? Um, then this is the next topic. Okay, but you can always ask your questions okay, if you have more questions about the previous topic. So incorrect attribution. Okay, 
you have to make sure that you distinguish your own words versus words and ideas from other authors. So you can't combine and say, for example, Crenshaw 2020 talked about the importance of managing, managing um, our time or, or for individuals to manage uh, their time in the workplace. Um, because because um, if I don't manage my time, um, I will be overwhelmed with tasks, okay? And here's another example that I wrote here. Being able to manage my time can help me compartmentalize the different tasks that I have to accomplish each day. What's the problem with that citation and that sentence? Can you guys guess what is the problem? Anything, you guys can type anything. Tell me what you think. Um, oh, okay, all right. All right, very good, Heather. So it's not a citation, it's your own idea, okay? So Crenshaw didn't talk about me, they didn't talk about my time management skills in his article or in his book, okay? So, you know, who, I mean, am I special? I mean, of course we're all special, right? But I don't remember Crenshaw, okay, if that's your example, talking about your own management, time management skills, okay? So did Crenshaw talk about your own ability to manage your time? So what exactly did Crenshaw write? So you have to separate that. So one sentence will be your own example, being able to manage my time. That's my own example. Then the next sentence, I can introduce Crenshaw. I could still start with the sentence and say, time management is an important skill uh, that time management is an important skill that individuals need to um, need to practice or they will not, they will be overwhelmed with task. Okay. Uh, and then I could cite Crenshaw. Okay. And then I could even add, um, he further stated or Crenshaw further stated that by doing this, this, and that, um, I will not, or, or individuals will not feel overwhelmed. And then after that citation, you can, you can go ahead and add your own example. Or you can say in the workplace, for example, um, employees are given specific tasks to do their work. To be able to handle these things, then uh, we are supposed to take a break and then have an inbox, an outbox. Then you can include an example. So a good way of citing your sources would be you could even start with a source and, and say, this is what Crenshaw said about time management. Then your own example, and then include another source that talks about time management, and then end with your own example as well. As long as it's clear who's saying what in that sentence, okay? So sometimes I'm not even clear. Who said that? Did you say that? Did he say that? You know, make, make, make sure it's a clear distinction. Any questions about that? So that's a problem sometimes that I've seen in students' writing. They tend to combine two ideas um, that are their own ideas and also the idea from another source. Okay, so that's one problem. Um, in terms of citations also, um, uh, incorrect, not necessarily incorrect attribution, but I'll, I'll see sometimes three words and it'll say, um, I need to manage my time. And then it'll say, um, you will become productive, four words. And then I'll have a citation, okay? That doesn't really give me enough, I, you know, enough information about what the author said. Um, and I know, you know, the requirements for a lot of the papers is to have three sources, okay? A minimum of three sources by adding four words and a citation doesn't really do justice for those three sources that you need to have, or even including a dictionary definition 
You know, it's not an incorrect attribution, but if you look at the rubric, there's a rubric there that says application of source materials. For me, it's not adequate enough that you use three or four words and then you have a citation or you have one quotation, one sentence quotation, and then you have a source or a dictionary definition. That doesn't seem to be a sub substantive use of source for your paper. Okay, so you have to make sure that you really explain what that source said um, and then provide your own ideas, especially if it's a direct quote as well. Okay, all right, any other questions before we move on to the next topic? The next topic is using you or your in papers. Okay, all right, you or yours. Okay, so here I wrote, are you? Yes, it's hard to tell what you're referencing, okay? So in papers also, it's kind of difficult not to use the word you or your, right? Um, an example, okay? Uh, you need to take responsibility as a leader or else you. Okay? When I see that, are you talking to me? I mean, are you telling me that I'm not taking responsibility for my actions? what right so you have to be very careful okay you're talking to a general audience but at the same time your readers don't want to feel like you're blaming them okay for something that they don't have an idea okay it's an interesting topic but hey i'm, I'm not doing that okay so avoid using you or your because it's first it's a informal reference okay it's a second person point of reference an informal style of writing as well so you can use the third person okay they them okay everyone okay um you could use i or me for the first person but try to be consistent with your tense okay so don't switch from saying you know they them and then suddenly you know Oh, I or we, okay? Be consistent unless you're, you're providing an example um, about your own situation. Then you could do I or me, but then as a general tone, right? Use they, them in, in your writing, okay? So it's like you're pointing a finger. So don't use you or your, okay? Focus on a broad, broader audience um, and that, you know, once you once I make that comment, let's say in one paragraph, that usually applies to the rest of the paper. Okay. Um, so Camille, let me let me look at what Camille uh, wrote here uh, about paraphrasing. Um, sometimes I want to paraphrase, but it takes more than one sentence. Are you able to paraphrase more than one sentence and cite appropriately? So yes, you can do that. You can do that. Um, it's a bit of a challenge at the beginning, especially if the topic is something that's not, that's not something that you are familiar with. The key to paraphrasing, what I tell students is, let's say they have three to five sentences. You know, try, try to kind of do a paragraph, three to five sentences that you want to paraphrase. Read that three to five sentences three times. Read it. Read it again. Then read it again. Okay, and then cover, cover that paragraph. And let's say you're talking to someone uh, and, and tell that person what you just read in your own words. So that's one way to paraphrase. And then once you've written that, written that sentence, go back and kind of revise it so that it has a more formal tone, okay? So I would read something. If I don't understand, right? If you don't understand what you just read, then you really can't paraphrase. So read it again, okay? And then if it makes sense, then write it the way you understand or you understood that sentence or paragraph. And if not, read it again, okay? And after you've read it, cover it, okay? Cover the paragraph and then talk to someone or talk to anyone who wants to listen. Talk to your pet if, you're, if no one's there and just say, you know what? I read something that was interesting. Um, Smith wrote this article about women 
in uh, leadership positions. Uh, Smith mentioned that more women today are applying for leadership jobs and are not simply settling for um, uh, an employee, just a regular employee position, right? So write it down, write that. That's your own words, okay? And that's how you understood what was said by the other author. Now go back to what you wrote and then just change it up to make it sound um, more formal academic writing, but don't forget to cite the source. Source Smith indicated, or at the end, Smith, and then the year of publication, okay? So that's one trick. Th this way you're not using the same words and you're not just moving the words around to say that you've paraphrased. And I've seen that also. Um, there's a sentence and then writers would just move the same word to the end and then change the order of the sentence and then say that's paraphrasing. No, paraphrasing has to be your own ideas, your own words, your own interpretation of what you've read. So that's paraphrasing. All right, any questions about paraphrasing and the use, it, the use of you or your? Actually, the topic is you or yours, but I read Camille's um, question about that. So Camille, I hope that answered your question. Okay, um, any questions about you or your? And how many here would say you are guilty of using you or your in your paper? Are you guilty of doing that? And have you avoided, um, <laughs> thank you, Holly. And have you avoided or tried your best to avoid using you or your? Who else? We only have one person who's guilty of using you or your. I tend to say that in my writing, you, okay? You, you didn't bring me food. You didn't, you know, bring me water, okay? All right, you, right? Yes, try to avoid it, but do a control F, a fine, and then see how many times you've mentioned it and then erase it in your paper. Okay, moving on, okay? And then I think I have two more slides and then we can stop for questions, okay? All right. Um, let me just double check. So yes, I have two more slides and then I'll stop for questions, okay? All right, source usage. Um, going back to those uh, using sources and going back to the requirements in the rubric for writing a paper, they're especially in the final portfolio, okay? If you look at your final project, one of the rubric there, it says application of sources, okay? And this is where I go back to what I said earlier, where students will use, or writers, okay, will use one quote, one line, a quote from Johnson, 2020, indicated, or, or a quote from Johnson, okay, and then there's one long quote, um, leadership behaviors are very important in organizational culture. Quote, okay, Johnson, 2021, page two. And then next paragraph. And that's it, that's it. Uh, that's not a substantial use of sources, okay? You have to be able to explain the quote. Uh, you have to also indicate how that quote um, applies to your overall paper, okay? So make sure, make sure that, you know, when I see that, um, I make a comment. Mm, you didn't really explain what that quote means. Um, and so if you look at that uh, fourth bulleted item right below that, the, the first plus sign, it's not enough to slap a quote to meet the required number of sources. Okay, It's not enough to just put that quote and say, oh, that's my first source. I'm required to have five. Okay, what's another quote that I can use? Oh, let me have this dictionary. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right, so that's not enough. You, you have to say, you have to tell us more about what that source said about the topic that you're discussing, okay? Um, don't, just, don't just include a citation after a citation. So I've seen that in paragraphs. Uh, one, first sentence, a citation. Then the next sentence, another citation. And then the next sentence, another citation. Another sentence, 
another citation, okay? Well, I mean, it didn't really explain what that information meant. I mean, it's just one citation after another, you've met the number of required sources, but in terms of the analysis, which is another part of that rubric. So my, my challenge is for you to review, look at the rubric and look at the different cri criterion, okay? Um, listed there, okay? And see if one of that is analysis. Were you able to an analyze the information from the course materials? Or did you just write citation after citation after citation? Where is your own analysis? You know, what, what do you think about all these quotes? What else did the source say to add value to your paper? Even in the, at the end of your paper synthesis, okay? Uh, a lot of times it's a repetition of the introduction but there's no true analysis of the overall content of the paper, okay? Um, so you gotta add more. You, you, you know, it, it's not enough to copy a quote and say, that's it, that's all I have. Make sure to explain. Any questions about source usage and analysis of information? Any questions? And feel free to share your own thoughts, ideas about the use of outside sources and not, not using them substantially in your paper, okay? And, and if you guys go to the chat area, um, Sealy posted several links to the Writing Center um, and other helpful resources for you to help you with your writing, the introductions, um, thesis statement, uh, writing topics, using sources, paraphrasing, definitions, okay? Um, so Shannon, for the definition, if you copy the definition, then you need to have quotation marks. If you paraphrase the definition, you do paraphrase using your own words again, okay, using your own words, you do not need quotation marks, but you do need to have citations. So whether you paraphrase, you use quotes, or you summarize, you do need to have citations at the end. So citations, simple as writing the author's last name and the year of publication. And then if you have direct quotes, then include the page or paragraph number. The conclusion is an area where you could um, write freely, so that's also okay, Yvonne, Yvonne but um, you mention your thesis statement again. You kind of remind readers about your stance and whether you were able to justify and, and, and responded to the argument that you post at the beginning, but don't just copy, okay? Um, I also like to look at the conclusion as the um, action plan. Um, or desired action you want from your readers. Now that you've explained what the topic is and you've talked about leadership styles, what now, okay? And of course, don't introduce anything new uh, that you haven't talked about in the body of your paper, okay? You just re-emphasize what you said in, your, in the body of your paper, but you kind of have like a, an action item. Now that we've learned something about uh, leadership styles, um, it's very important too, okay? And conclusion is also a way to synthesize. So that's another topic that, that we could discuss in the future. In your final portfolio project, there is a criterion, it's called synthesis. How do you synthesize the information? And I remind my students, synthesize the information, okay? How do you bring all these authors together at this final point in your conclusion. All right, so Jack, when citing an APA, do you put author's last name, year of publication, and then pages? So yes, author's last name, year of publication for the citation in the body of the paper, okay? Page or paragraph number if there are direct quotes, okay? If there are no direct quotes, don't put page or paragraph number. If the, if the author's last name is not available, then you look for the organization's name. So you look on the, the website 
and go all the way down to the copyright information to check if the organization's name is provided. Okay. All right. So this is the end of our presentation. But before we go, okay, so stay with me before we go. And I'll and 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 I also want to make sure I answer your questions. There are many rules to remember when it comes to writing. So don't don't memorize them. Okay. Look at the rules and see how you can follow and apply those rules in your own writing. Okay. And avoid making the same mistakes. Look at the feedback from your instructor from the writing center and see how you can apply that feedback to future papers. What I see sometimes is um, I see the same errors. So that means maybe, you know, some students are not reading the feedback. Um, and then what did you learn? How can you apply that in your own writing for future assignments and in the workplace? Okay. And my final point, so kind of like this is my action, right? My conclusion and my desired action plan for all of you. What errors are flagged in your papers? Okay, write this here. This will give us an idea in terms of what webinars to give you in the future. What topics would you like to discuss in the future? And okay, a positive note, what did you like about our workshop? Okay, all right. Um, so Jack, they're not really similar. Um, a little bit similar because you're talking about the same thing, but see if you can also express the conclusion, okay? Um, by re-emphasizing the thesis statement, but without copying it word for word. Another thing is in your conclusion, see if you can bring the common themes from the three sources or more that you've introduced in your paper and then mention them in the, in the conclusion. We have learned some common themes about leadership styles from Smith, Johnson, and Garcia. And the common theme is, okay? So it's okay to mention that because you've already mentioned them in the body of your paper, okay? All right. Um, and then from Jason, I run into trouble when quoting and paraphrasing from the same source in a single paragraph, when, where to cite after the first quote. So that could be a topic. So that's a good one, a good topic to discuss for our next webinar, when to cite. There's different ways of citing your sources. So, so, but I could give examples for our next webinar. You could cite at the beginning, okay? Uh, Crenshaw mentioned. You could cite in the middle where you talk about your own style of writing. And then you can say, in fact, this idea or this approach is validated by Crenshaw when he said this. Or you could add that at the end and say, time management is, and then you have Crenshaw. So we could discuss that further and provide more examples in terms of when to cite your sources. Anything else from everyone? What did you like about our webinar? Um, what else would you like to see in our future webinar? And I hope you had, um, you learned something from our uh, writing webinar this evening. Okay, thank you all for being here. Yes, yeah, citing sources, different sources, okay, websites. All right, anything else? And uh, the citing sources, anything else that you guys liked or enjoyed? Um, and I know it's dinner time for some, for many of you. So thank you for staying with me. Yeah, thank you everyone. My, uh, Teresa, I think my video has been disabled, <laughs> but I just wanted, before we go, I just wanted to encourage everyone to, um, of course, make, uh, you know, if you want more personalized attention, please feel free to make um, an appointment with a writing consultant. I will throw the link in here. I know I sent a bunch of links. I'm sorry if that was overwhelming. So if you want to book a um, writing consultation, I just put the link. I saw Jack asked uh, if we could, if he could access the recorded webinar. Yes, we will um, let you all know when this is available for everyone to view the recording. And uh, yeah, just wanted to let, and if, oh, I also wanted to let you guys know that uh, the Writing Center website does have a search bar. So if you're ever like, I cannot find 
something about paraphrasing or whatever, use that search bar. And if you ever have trouble finding information on the website, you can email us at uh, writing.center at csuglobal.edu. Okay. Thank you so much, Teresa. This was great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Stay, stay safe. Okay. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.